is deep because Merriam-Webster Online defines exchequer as pay attention. Exchequer, a department or office of state in medieval England charged with the collection and management of the royal revenue and judicial determination of all revenue causes. And in respects to truth being stranger than fiction, it also defines exchequer as the national banking account of this realm. Of this realm. Because other realms do exist. So I am forced to wonder what banking accounts do the other realms use? What currency? Is their currency just like ours? What other realms exist? How many realms? One thing I do know is the king is God, Jesus is a ship, and hell is full of the king's debtors. Matthew six twelve KJV. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now let's begin. Now we all paying taxes in the state of hell when you are the tail and not the head. Deuteronomy 28 said all you had to do is listen. Now you're in the king's chamber. Who's the king now? Who's God now? Who's the God of the matrix? Jesus is a ship. What ship did Columbus and him pull up on? A ship called Jesus. You feel like you're in hell right now. My naga, separation is natural, natural by law. <laughs> you might feel like you're getting tugged all kind of different ways, man, but don't let yourself get engulfed in frustration and hurt and pain. Feel like somebody don't get you. Don't fall for that trap, you know. Nobody get me. She don't get me, man. The homies don't get me, man, you know. Separation is natural. If you got to separate and you got to vibe up, you got to separate and vibe up. Sometimes people got to separate from you and vibe up. All praise for why you tribe up even stronger, man. But the frequency is hitting us, man, at a rate, you know, where all we can do, man, is uh, link in with our loved ones, link in with the code keepers, you know what I'm saying? Link in with yourself, man. Try up with yourself. Man, come back to the one. You know what I'm saying? Hey, uh, <laughs> when we say observe the code, when we say KTC, keep the code, I just want you to remember, man. <laughs> it's all about observation. A high arrow, A I R R. O-E underscore 999. It's a wave of possibilities. It's like a video game. It hasn't even rendered in yet. As soon as you observe it, that's when it becomes solid matter. Nothing is real. Since the photons travel one by one, some through this slit, some through that slit, you would expect them to leave a pattern of two stripes on the wall. And you would be wrong. They mysteriously create a band of stripes. This is what you would expect to see if a constant beam of light shined through the two slits. It would spread across the wall like a wave. So how can single bullet-like particles of light create a wave pattern? This could only happen if the particles go through both slits at the same time. In other words, the particle is in two places at once. But strangest of all is what happens when you put detectors next to the slits. Observation. When the photons are being watched, the wave pattern disappears. Mm. Take away the detectors and the wave pattern comes back. Mm. This suggests that we can change the way reality behaves just by looking at it. Mm. By observing. The code, the commandments, you can change your reality <laughs> because you're changing your behavior pattern. You're not putting your energy into Christmas and Halloween and any other powers, anything connected with any other powers, Saturnalia, nothing, man. 
You're only most high over everything. You know what I mean? You uh aren't slaying your uh, you aren't you aren't slaying your brother. You aren't on no demon time no more. You see where that's getting you hell or in jail. <laughs> Cause you're slaying your brother, man. You're treating your brother like an op because of some narrative, man, because of the constant bloodshed making the hurt and the pain deeper, harder to let go of this frequency war more and more. Who's the constructors of this matrix? Love to natural, the matrix. <laughs> Being in assimilation doesn't mean it doesn't matter. What they're calling assimilation means that your energy frequency and your vibration, you know, is still at use. You know what I mean? Even if what you perceive as reality ain't quite reality. Uh, always reminds me of the book of Solomon. You know, the wisdom of Solomon, that is, you know, I believe it's chapter one or two where it says, only to the unwise do they seem to die. Only to the unwise do they seem to die. So we always try to stomach, how can the creator, how can God allow all this death, allow this bloodshed, allow this torture and treachery and all this if you look at it as if it's a simulation type of situation, like an avatar type of flow, <laughs> only to the unwise do they seem to die. And understanding that will alleviate, alleviate some of your fear of death because, you know, <laughs> only to the unwise do they seem to die. And that's what made him afraid of us, man. That's why we kept multiplying and coming back into this may, this matrix. Because they can't do nothing to us in reality. And once you understand that, you're not afraid of no hijack. <laughs> and without the fear spell, they have nothing, boss. Because fear is their greatest weapon. And unity is our greatest weapon. And sometimes that unity comes with separation. And separation is is natural by law. So we observe the code because without observing Deuteronomy 28, you listen, you hearken, you get the blessings in and out. You coming in, you get Baruch. You coming out, you get Baruch. Baruch everywhere. Baruch in abundance. Baruch, Baruch. You don't listen, meaning that you are putting yourself in the frequency of slaying your brother, your sister, thievery, you know, knocking each other down for no reason, false witnessing. That or not could put you in a different reality. You are now observing what the hijack wants you to observe. And how do you know the hijack wants you to observe this reality, which ain't reality? Listen to the music on the radio. What are they promoting in the movies, the images? Sex and low frequency uh, images of yourself. You just spewing your energy randomly. You only live once. <laughs> fear, fear, fear. Death, death, death. Drill, drill, drill. Kill, kill, kill. That's not becoming of you, my naga. You a cold keeper, my naga. That's not how dragons operate. What kind of dragon are you operating outside your code? You don't tell me a dragon don't have his cold, her cold. Dragon cold is everything. <laughs> this is the year of the dragon. We're talking dragon lines. Intersecting lines. Frequency lines and a frequency war. <sighs> yeah. You know, we try to drop a little bit on the frequency war. They try to block us. They try to hijack us, my naga. But my knockers keep <laughs> coming back and multiplying even stronger. The water to all the cons, man, popping in on Patreon. Click the link below. You can join for free. You can join for a $3 donation, my nugget. And we're going to be dropping that exclusive, exclusive block, uh, uncensored <laughs> content that they don't let us drop. Now I can go in on the tenderoni like I've been wanting to go in on the tenderoni. <laughs> now I can just do a couple other things while we get our website. 
repaired and restored on a brand new server and all that. So it's all happening. But right now, right here, I'm going to, you know, <laughs> be able to go into all that drought that they had to, you know, block and remove off of YouTube. We're going to put it on the Patreon, man. So the water to all my cons you see right here. Uh, a lot of these cons been wave surface from the very beginning, supporting everything no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Major patience and love and continue a hop to all my cons here, man. So, you know, this is the first wave of cons. Checking in on the Patreon. And, uh, you know, I look forward to getting cozy with y'all, man. Just popping off uh, really on a daily basis right here. And the water, man, to your continued support and everything you've been doing. Um, you know, we got land to build, so this three bucks a month, you know, we get a couple thousand nagas over here, you know what I'm saying? Then we got constant, you know, energy to build our land, build our vibration, you know what I'm saying? And um, pop off our podcast even better, different things we want to do. So please, my naga, if it's worth it to you, um, you know, be a, a, a donated member, man, $3 a month couple nagas, <laughs> a dollar a piece, whatever you need to do to get the drop. And we're going to be dropping, like I said, everything they're taking down, everything they're afraid for us to talk about. We can drop it right here. And I heard Rumble is cool, too. So I'm going to check out Rumble and kind of divvy out some of these platforms, man, and, you know, pop off. So holla at your koala. Don't holla at koalas, man. Four through two to drop. Patreon. Let's see how we're doing so far. How we doing so far? We just dropped this, what, a day ago or so, man? So, the water cons, man, I mean, it just feels good. Yeah, we already talking about the 100 monkey experiment. Uh, I might get a clip of that. <laughs> Even, uh, hey, right now, I might get a little clip. Because if you remember this 100 money, 100th monkey experiment, they taught a couple monkeys just a couple things, and next thing you know, all the monkeys got the drop. And we've been seeing that in real time, man, as we've been building Keep it cold, uh, you know, Managas, now you hear it out, you know, all of, all about everywhere you at, you know what I'm saying? You hear, oh, wow. I mean, that came from the heart bone, man, and you hear it spreading. You hear Nagas keeping it cold. You hear the things we're doing spreading. This is part of the 100 monkey <laughs> experiment, what they call it, but we call it the uh, 9,000s dragon experiment where the dracons are coming alive and you feel it within you without having to, you don't know where you saw it. You don't know where you got it. You don't know when it started. I don't know when I started popping off. My life, like a lot of us just started popping off and this experiment they did on these monkeys, <laughs> you know, they were just popping off. Like they just taught a few monkeys some things. And next thing you know, the whole tribe knew what it was and it lets you know how energy spreads, especially, you know, when you already are connected connected all it takes is a few nuggets to keep the code for keeping the code to be a regular thing again to be out of code is abnormal again you know anyway man this is what we're talking about on the patreon you know also said we got to dig on this drop you know what i'm saying for preston 129 you want to know what it is go dig on it man click the link below get in the patreon and you know we're gonna have some fun we're gonna run it up for joy world Got a lot to do, a lot more fence to put up, a lot more paint for the fence, uh, sheds to build, water wells, and uh, solar power, solar panels. We got things to do, so Patreon's going to help us with that a lot, man. And, yes, there's pyramids and Antarctica, my naga. Hit up the Patreon. So, yeah, right now, 43 a month, my naga. That's, that's dope. We know we could depend on that that 40 spot, love to my cons. So, you know, if you... Checking in, this is how we're going to build it up. And we're going to keep doing it, man, because the drop don't stop. The water keep flowing and the fire keep burning. We get 5,000 nuggets over here on Patreon. We win it. We win it. We ain't got to, you know, run no GoFundMe's, nothing. We can just support. You know, It's already here. You know what I'm saying? So this is a good idea. and It's perfect, man. It's right on time, man. So a lot of Yeah. We're going to talk a little Antarctica. We're going to talk a little Aquaman part two uh you know we're gonna have fun man let's, let's pop off we out of here man man where do we start where do we you know where we start you know where we go <laughs> it's all natural by law 
It's all natural by law. Shout out to Khan. Natural, man. Baby Khan, supernatural. The whole natural family. Natural, man. Been popping off, man. Let's get it, man. Focused on energy. I think it's that time. Matter of fact, I know it's that time. Oh, oh my God. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go, man. They can't stop us, super. They can't stop us, supernatural. Hey, we by law focus on that energy. Yeah. My crown popper. Oh. 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 Focus on me, everything on me, everything on me, me. First things first, yeah, that man's back to the work. work. I guess I gotta put him in the dirt on my graveyard shift. But I'm on the ground like the earth net, working, trying to grow my net worth. What you know about turf? Gotta have my pockets on burst, like the pistol off safety when we lurk. It's OG Merc, got you in your feelings where it hurts. Cut throat and been this way since birth. Well strapped with the verse, automatically I lay them in a hearse. Paul better in the flow's getting worse. I'm on this shit, handwritten guns with a curse. When they hear it, leave their spirit on surf. The vision is the perk. I treat a 16 like dessert, serving water because they dying from the thirst. Ocean grown when I zone, bring them home over any microphone. Make an atheist believe it out of church. They cannot see what the eye don't believe And I don't ain't to please, I was brought around G's So they copy my steez I think I'ma charge a fee while I'm mowing down trees Got me feeling like please I wish somebody would while I'm stacking my cheese And attacking these beats It feels good to be free, yeah I'm focused on me In the cup rolling no G Keeping all my plans low key, yeah I'm focused on me You already know what I need My money ain't growing on trees, yeah I'm focused on me Homie, that's all I can see, kicking back with an L in the breeze, yeah, I'm focused on me, yeah, I'm focused on me, why you watch TV, yeah, I'm focused on me, in the cup, rolling no G, keeping all my plans low key, yeah, I'm focused on me, you already know what I need, my money ain't growing on trees, yeah, I'm focused on me, homie, that's all I can see, kicking back with an L in the breeze, yeah, I'm focused on me, yeah, I'm focused on me, why you watch TV? Haters want that static, I'm like, we'll make it happen Got no time for the worries, these streets raise me in havoc They gon' yap it like a captain on words, but ain't no action I get more from the movies, you losers just spitting captions You know, mark them out with all the bullshit, extend those in full clips I mean, enemies, I got a full list, they wouldn't recognize the truth from the pulpit Paint the image of the rhyme, so stupid, I'm going in with this pen like a I mean, slow ass niggas can't compute this You know them haters gon' question how I do this They cannot see what the eye don't believe And I don't ain't to please, I was brought around G's So they copy my steez I think I'ma charge a fee while I'm mowing down trees Got me feeling like please I wish somebody would while I'm stacking my cheese And attacking these beats It feels good to be free, yeah, I'm focused on me in the cup, rolling no G, keeping all my plans low key. Yeah, I'm focused on me. You already know what I need. My money ain't growing on trees. Yeah, I'm focused on me, homie. That's all I can see. Kicking back with an L in the breeze. Yeah, I'm focused on me. Yeah, I'm focused on me. Why you watch TV? Yeah, I'm focused on me. In the cup, rolling no G, keeping all my plans low key. Yeah, I'm focused on me. You already know what I need. My money ain't growing on trees. Yeah, I'm focused on me. That's all I can see, kicking back with an L in the breeze Yeah, I'm focused on me Yeah, I'm focused on me Why you watch TV? Yeah <laughs> Tribe of music <laughs> Hey, man Ain't nothing else to it, man Can you dig it, man? That's that guy right there, man Natural by Law, I'm going to leave the link, man. You get in the classroom. You just popping off some new pop offness. Go ahead and get in that sauce, that man sauce, man. Hey, out to the cotton, yo, to real. My bro's putting out beautiful music for the tribe. So we will be featuring it. My Jigga's putting out beautiful music. Matter of fact, just click the link below. Get all that tribal music because Ma does a great job of, you know, putting it all in one playlist for us right here. On the tube, man. So tribe up is tribe up music is up. You know what I mean? Like this is this is our battle cry. You know what I mean? This is our vibration. 
Um, it's hip hop, it's flow, it is, it's, it's history, it's real, it's street. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's the blueprint. You know what I mean? It's, it's the, it's the cipher. You know, it's the cipher. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, it's the vibration, man. So it's nothing like it ever. You know what I mean? And um, just look out for us because we're just getting better. You know, it's just, it's just popping off. Hey, remember, man, <laughs> the vibe is spreading. And it's not my vibe. It's not such and such vibe. You know what I'm saying? It's not. No one owns the vibe. It's Hawaii frequency by law, natural by law. All right, man. I'm up now. I'm up. Okay. So you know we about to be we about to be popping off some or calcum. <laughs> We're gonna talk some or calcum flow. We're gonna talk cities of gold. Last time we talked a little or calcum. I want to talk some gold. They call it mountain copper, mountain metal. Aura. And I said, what's Moses' pop's name, man? Yeah, you know, I just just I'm just reaching maximum pop off. This don't, don't mind me, man. Moses Father. Right. Amra, man. Amra. I mean, Aram, you know. What's uh, Aaron's name, man? <laughs> Aram, Aram. I I'm just saying we all are connected. Phonetically, linguistically, to the copper, we all are connected to the cities of go. Oh, 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 oh. Amram, Arum, Amram, you know what I mean? Haram, Aaron's name, Haram, man, you know, with the H or the H A H U. Gold, man, go. We're talking Oricalc. The more I look at this orcalco, the more interested I get. I can't I can't lie. I can't lie. <laughs> Ori, or like the or, uh, like the orcs, right? Um or or is the name of a metal or two different metals. Old writings from ancient Greece talk about orcalcum and the Romans made coins out of a metal. They call it orcalcum. So we see it in the cartoons, Mysterious Cities of Gold. We might actually, we might get, you know, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> we might get a piece of Cities of Gold, but YouTube be tripping. So that's why I look forward to popping off on a, on a new Patreon. I'll click the link below so I can literally watch these Cities of Gold without no jam ups, copyright, such and such. It's, man, we they understand we're doing it for educational purposes all. <laughs> All right, so or calcum is a thing, man. All right, so they say it's a mixture copper and either gold, tin, zinc, you know, different things. Okay. They say initially some scholars thought or calcum was the ancient Greek name for platinum. Others thought it was an alloy or mixture of copper and either gold. All right. And what I miss here is this, but they might not have been the same metal people or actually not sure exactly what it was until 2015 a shipwreck was found whose cargo contains ingots of orcalcum ingots i guess that's a lot of orcalcum so even as recent as 2015 they found orcalcum connected with some shipwreck and you know all these things, man. So, orichalcum is a real thing. Check. Orichalcum is very expensive. How much they said it was? Like, as much as gold? You know, we'll get that at another link, man. But, yeah, all right. Plato says orichalcum was in the ground of Atlantis. Ping pal. So, when we seeing Aquaman 2 <laughs> popping off. And they're using orichalcum, and it's a whole lost seventh kingdom. They said uh, they used all orichalcum for everything, and they made it seem like that's the dark king, and they made it seem like a, he was wicked. But in reality, Aquaman is the wicked one. They just are flipping the hero because this Aquaman is connected with the, you know, Poseidon in it, Atlas in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this this is Zeus in them. This is the pantheon. 
this is Zeus and then this is Jesus and then, you know what I mean? And so they made a different person a hero. So you got to pay attention in the movies who they make the villains are typically the real heroes, you know? So we got to really kind of dig on this seventh kingdom that they blotted out from the history books of Atlantis because of this Orichalcum takeover they had. Okay, so I to the Atlanteans, it was the second most valuable metal after gold. But not going to be the second most valuable metal. That's above platinum. That's above silver and any other coppers and diamonds, whatever they're dealing. That's very, very valuable. For you not to know about it, for it not to be in our psyche or calcum, and is that valuable? Let you know what they're really hiding, man. <laughs> Why they got to put it in cartoons, right? Or calcum. Mysterious gold metal. <laughs> that both Mu and Atlantis civilizations both used for their technology. So what was it about this orichalcum that was so easily, readily available? They said it came out the ground, used for the technology. Before orichalcum is fashioned, it's a liquid metal. So they can do a lot with it, right? They just found it in 2015 in this wreck. And it powered up Atlantis. Whew. At the room temperature like mercury. Whoa. Okay, like mercury, but it wasn't, right? Or calcum is a metal mentioned in several ancient writings, including the story of Atlantis, as recounted in the Critias dialogue recorded by Plato. According to Critias, or calcum was considered second only to the gold in value and was found in mind in many parts of Atlantis or America. In ancient times, by the time of Critias, however, it was known only by name. In numismatics, or calcum is the gold-colored bronze alloy used for the Ses Tertius and Dupontius coins. In many source sources of pop culture, such as novels and video games, or calcum is presented as a valuable ore that can be mined and crafted into powerful armor and weapons, just like Skyrim. You know, you dig on the Skyrim flow, you can mine or calcum. Okay, so why is it in the games? Why is it in the movies? Why is it in the TV shows? If it ain't nothing, if it ain't nothing, boss. Yeah, we're going to dig on some uh, cities of gold. Well, you know, throughout these cities of gold, these episodes, you know, they're digging directly without Oracle, especially in season three. And I ain't even dug on season three. I mean, I, I'm barely really digging on season one still, you know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> apparently season three, you know, it's Oracle heaven. I know that or, uh, season two, they had this whole Oracle factory that they showed where the golden condor was made this flying golden machine is made of orichalcum car car yeah look at the story they got on esteban he's an orphan rescued at sea as a baby 12 years old by the spanish navigator mendoza and then you look up esteban the real esteban and he's a grown-ass man in his 20s <laughs> a straight up Negro, you know what I'm saying, who is from Morocco as a more, also known as Mustafa. He does not look like this. Why do you think they want to switch our images so much? Why do you think they want to switch Esteban's image so much? Right? So I put in the real Esteban. Esteban. As a Mori, something like that. 
as a more Mustafa. <laughs> like, you think I'm playing? You think it's a game? Talking to Esteban Nico, man. Esteban Nico. So, this Esteban in the cartoon is factual. They just changed the image. Esteban Nico, also known as Esteban de Dorantes, and Esteban Nico the Moor. Now can you factor in the treaties of pieces of friendship? Now can you factor in black ass King Charles and black ass Esteban the Moor invading America at the same time? You don't think they're working together? We're talking the Moor, right? Was the first person of African descent to explore North America? Um, yeah, man, uh, we're just talking over calc, just talking over calc. There we go, there we go. <laughs> Bad y'all. I just got excited about some links I got. Some uh, cities of gold type of links. All right, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Okay, okay. So, does this look like? I mean, you see town. So, they give one kawam, which means brown in Hebrew, kawam. They give one kawam a uh, naga because <laughs> they can't refute that they roll it up on town. That's part of town's story, right? <laughs> Yeah, Tao is the last living descendant of the sunken empire. Mu. God. He lived alone on the Galapagos Island. Now, where is that? You know what I mean? Archipelago of volcanic islands in the eastern Pacific, located around the equator, west of South America. So you think they just coming up with stuff? Or did they just making this up? That's all connected to Moon, Hawaii, all that. Initially, he is evasive of the other's company because he's hijacked free when they wash up on his island. But when the ship Solaris was revealed, he joined them on a journey. Because he knew the ship Solaris was made of orichalcum and it connected with his people. God, God, God. So they make Esteban uh, non melanated. And Ep I saw a part of season three, and Tao tells Zia, he's like, Yeah, our people, this is our people technology. He looks at her. Esteban ain't included in this, but Esteban's also a, a dark-skinned man, a dark-skinned man. So it's letting you know that all so-called dark-skinned people ain't connected with the same technologies, roots, <laughs> none of that that they try to sell us on. Because Esteban is the first person <laughs> of African descent to explore North America, period. You need to let that sink in, man. You need to let that sink in. And why they color coded him, why they changed the image of Esteban if he's the first person of African descent. Why does Esteban look like this? Same thing they make the Native Americans look like. <laughs> Same thing they make the uh who all these islands, Honduras, Costa Rica's, uh Ecuador, uh uh Nicaragua. Uh, South America, Peru, Mexico. <laughs> this is the image we get. This is what we get. <laughs> Why, if that's true, do they have to change the image knowing damn well the same what it is? And he's supposed to be the first African to step foot in North America. Why are, are these changed images so consistent with each other? Why don't they want these Negroes to know that they are the indigenous 
of all these Central American countries, South American and North American countries. And we got to dig further and say, oh, well, it's not just black people. It's certain tribes, right? And other tribes were at war coming over to us. That's the bond. Mr. Rescue That Sea, <laughs> Mr. Rescue That Sea was the first person of African descent <laughs> to explore North America. Come on, man. He wasn't just rescued at sea uh, by happenstance, by coincidence, and then was the first African to explore North America, boss. Little is known about his background, but contemporary accounts describe him as a Negro. Arab speaking black man, native to Azamor, Morocco. Treaties of Pieces and Friendship. Y'all want to talk about? Y'all want to talk about this? Because I, I I don't hear them talking about Esteban's role very much, man. <laughs> Who he was rolling with? I think they want us to believe he was just some baby, some baby. Some baby that was rescued and just was on a journey wearing a Orichalca medallion. And he could communicate with the sun, y'all, and make the sun come out because he's the child of the sun. That sounded a lot like Jesus to me. <laughs> sounded a lot like Jesus. All right. Christians, it sounds... Esteban sounds a lot like JC, you have to admit. <laughs> Hoist him up high at the port to call out the sun. He can call out the sun to aid the departing ships. That means they didn't have sun normally in Europe or wherever he's from. African descent, but now he's in Europe and he's calling out the sun. So they call him the child of the sun. He joins the Spaniards in their search for one of the seven cities of gold in the New World, boss. Yeah, he's the child of the sun. Sun God, go to church on a Sunday. Sun, sun, sun. You're starting to see where the paganism's coming in at. The idolatry is coming in. They started worshiping Esteban. I said, they started worshiping the first person of African descent to explore North America. The Negro. The black man speaking Arabic. But is he a rabbi? Is he a, uh, you know, uh, what they say? What was the term for the official Arabs and the non-official Arabs, Arab proper? Is he an A-Rabbi proper? <laughs> Is he a real A-Rabbi? We, we didn't have a whole drop on that, right? So go get it. Go get the drop. Nah, man. He's, he's a speaking. He's just speaking A-Rabbi. But he's a black man. Coming to America. Just like the movie, right? <laughs> Do they worship this guy? Is there an Saint Esteban Day? Come on, man. No. Please don't say there's a Saint Esteban Day. Damn, damn, damn. Saint Stephen's Day, because Stephen is Esteban in the timelines. <laughs> Three major chronological time shifts and a totally for the man cool. Why are you celebrating Christmas and your New Year's at the same damn time as you are commemorating Esteban, child of the sun? Why are you celebrating the Son of God, Jesus? At the same time as the child of the sun, Esteban, the same 
damn time. Yeah, you know. Hey, the day after Christmas, man, you got your new toys, you popping off. But it's more paganism involved than you think. Because they are worshiping the first African, who is St. Stephen. Because this Esteban was martyred. He took his ass up into New Mexico. And them natives said, nah, man, we don't believe your story, boss. You said some white people sent you. And you want to take our women and steal our turquoises and copper and orichalcum? The story is Esteban was still in turquoises. But now we understand the relationship with turquoise and copper. And now we can understand the relationship between copper and orichalcum. <laughs> and the cities of gold cartoon is all about Esteban and the orichalcum. So now we see it wasn't just turquoises. He was jacking the gold. He was jacking the orichalcum. He was jacking the technology. And they put him to death in Hawaku, Hawaku, New Mexico. Zuni Cibola Complex. You look it up. You dig on it. We been digging on it. We talking about the black man. How come he ain't involved with black history, man? He's the first person of African descent. He should be venerated for by all black people, unless you understand my naga that this nigga came up with the hijack to drop dime and blow up the spot on the promised land. He came over here to make it hot. He came over here with the ops. That's why he was martyred. And they threw him back in the timeline to the 200s and something, or whatever, at St. Stephen. And they call him, uh, uh, you know, St. Esteban Day. St. Esteban Day. What, how many Esteban churches are there? How many churches are venerating Esteban? You think it's play play? Huh? St. Stephen Church. St. Stephen Church. St. Stephen Catholic Church. St. Stephen. You didn't know it was so many St. Stephen Churches. But this is the black man that was martyred, <laughs> that was put to death in Hawaku, New Mexico, as the first non-native or African Morocco as a Moor to come over here and try to exploit the people. And they say he brought them weapons and decorations of death, idols. He came to a holy place with idolatry, and they put him down for that. So they called him the first Christian martyr because he supposedly had converted to Christianity, supposedly. <sighs> then we said, is this who Columbus carried over? Because you got St. Christopher, right? St. Christopher the dog headed. Go look it up. I got a lot of drop. You go dig on this at this point because we done did it. So you do. You dig on St. Christopher the dog head is supposed to be popular for carrying this child across the ocean called the Christ child <laughs> who cured him of his dog headedness and he went from being a non dog a dog head to a non dog head so Esteban can cure dog headedness apparently <laughs> so he was also venerated for curing dog headedness the Saint Christopher or again Timelines, Christopher Columbus carry Esteban Nico. Because remember, 1492, Columbus sells the ocean blue. Esteban's born in the early 1500s. He was just a baby. He was just a baby when Columbus was selling. Did he carry Esteban across the water? Is that the story of St. Christopher carrying his Christ child? Since you know they venerated Esteban, St. Christopher carries the Christ child. I didn't have to say it all the way. Huh? According to legend, St. Christopher, which I believe is Columbus, the dog headed. But look at these images, right? Look at this. They're going to give you some white man. Burly white man carrying baby Jesus. The problem is this is in 200s. This ain't back in 
the BC or or AD Christ died in AD twenty nine or thirty or thirty two whatever thirty three thirty four whatever you know? <laughs> AD thirty four Christ supposed to be died, but this is Saint Christopher's two hundred AD. So what baby Jesus is he carrying two hundred years later? Ah wait, we gotta put in Saint Christopher the dog head, right? So this Christ child, I believe, is Esteban, child of the sun. Christ just means anointed. And Esteban, if he's commanding the sun, he's anointed to them. <laughs> if he can make the sun come out to Europe, he's anointed, right? St. Christopher. Oh, we got to put in dog-headed boss. We got to put in dog-headed boss. Oh, yeah, because things change. <clears throat> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, things change. Now we got gnarly, snarly St. Christopher, the werewolf, the dog headed sign of Sephala. And it's not just one image, it's many. It's many balls. It's many balls. So this dog head carried this anointed child of the sun across the water and this child of the sun somehow had the power to cure St. Christopher of his dog headedness. So he went from this to this, right? This to this. Now Christopher Columbus dies of so-called gout disease, which is very similar to the sinus of phylli, syphilis connected with these dogs. Maybe I'm overdropping. <laughs> I'm just saying this dog head, <laughs> this dog head carried this Christ child. <laughs> and this Christ child is St. Stephen. And St. Stephen is Esteban. And Esteban is Esteban de Dorantes. Esteban equals the more. Esteban as a more. And I'm telling you, it was three major chronological time shifts. And they pushed your, he pushed events from the 1500s back to 200 AD in the BCs. Yeah, they would do that. They pushed it back 333 years, 1,054 years, and 1,778 years, respectfully, respectively. So, at least three major chronological time shifts. So they took stuff right out the 14, 1500s, 1600s, and pushed it back, in some cases, 1800 years to the BCs. That's how you get 200 AD, dog-headed St. Christopher, and a 1400s, 1492, Christopher Columbus. That's how you get Moses all throughout the timelines, and David all throughout the timelines, and St. Stephen Esteban all throughout the timeline. Now they want to paint the picture. <laughs> oh, that looks a lot different than it is. I said he died in Hawa Cool, right? Hawa Cool, Hawa Cool was one of the largest of the Zuni pueblos at the time of the Spanish Entrada. It was founded in around 1400 AD. It was the first pueblo to be visited and conquered by Spanish explorers. The Spanish chroniclers refer to it as Cibola, 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 which is Shimbala, my life. Shimbola, Shimbala. All this is happening right here. This is Mustafa I'm talking about. As a Mori I'm talking about. Images. Wow, well. <laughs> my nigga. He's a regular bearded man. <laughs> he's a regular bearded. You would think he's an Israelite. His beard is so beardy. <laughs> but my nigga, he's a Moabite or an Edomite or something else. <laughs> But it's a more and more war. He's the first non-native American to come over here, man, claiming his land, claiming our women, claiming our copper, claiming our gold. 
And he brought all them viceroys, Mendoza, and them. He brought them in search of the seven cities of gold, which is your land, which is your inheritance. He came there to claim the Grand King. He brought the hijack with him. And they used him and his likeness because he looked like us, right, to get in. They used him to get in. Oh, that's the Black History Month challenge? I've never heard as the bond, as Amore brought up for Black History Month. So I guess it is a challenge. California love my ass, man. This is California hate. He came over here to hate. And separate, you know, <laughs> us from our inheritance, man. That's the bonds route. Well, you see it, fifteen twenty seven to fifteen thirty nine, right up the coast of Jamaica, Cuba, right through Haiti, right I T. Ain't that where Columbus hit up first? Uh, Trinidad and all that, Florida, <laughs> crossed. You know, along the shores, past the Mississippi, went into Galveston, Texas. Shout out to my toe, Texas. Kind of swerved through Texas, <laughs> down into Mexico, towards Mexico City, back over to Arizona, and bang, to Cibola, New Mexico, where he lost his life for being a hijack. So this image here, Looks a whole lot different than this cartoon, <laughs> non-melanated image here of the child of the sun. And I'm just asking, is this their real Jesus, man? Dog-headed? <laughs> Esteban Zamora. Is this the real son of God that they venerate? We know that they got Esteban churches all over the place. That's to buy everything. Got it. Let's go. I've been waiting to connect back with this X mark in the spot, man. When we see this great American eclipse popping off, and we understand the dragons, the comets, the meteors. Uh, that's always been involved. Even when we talk about the comet 18, 11, 18, 12, the comet that ran Napoleon out of Russia, <laughs> and the comet they called the Coon Saints Comet, whose name meant shooting star, Dragon, Dragon, just like Dragon Canoe. Dragons are active. You can't deny our dragons, you can't deny our ether, and you can't deny our wave. And you can't deny that there were glaciation lines, which means that in the 1800s, we still had glaciation lines, man. We still had moraines, rocks and soil deposited by retreating glaciers. What did glaciers have to do with the Ishmaelites migrating in America in 1785? Why would you be migrating into a war zone unless you was on the other side of the frequency war? Understanding that America's been at war <laughs> at least 93% of the time. At least. So we're talking Shikamago, 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 Shikamago. Whoa. And to Tukumse, whoa. War of 1812, Tukumse. And all the Seminole, Seminole Wars, and more Cherokee, Cherokee Indian Wars, and Mexican, Texas Indian War. When did you have time to be a slave that just got here? Who were these people fighting out the hijack this whole time? Who are the Shikamago?
But if you understand a black man, <laughs> uh, a dog-headed black man brought another dog-headed black man, and Charles V, another dog-headed black man, was behind all this invasion in the 1500s. You might understand who's still behind it in the 1700s. You might understand <laughs> why the Chickasaw and the Shawnee had to fight against the Choctaw and certain Creek and certain this and certain Muscogee. Like, you understand why there was a frequency war more and more? Because this invasion of melanated people, whether they was good or bad, tribed up or not tribed up, was already happening in the 1500s. By the time we get to 1785, how, oh how? How, Ishmael? How is this a good place to come migrate? How are you coming now? During the middle of the native Naga Wars. Were we being slaughtered? You coming? You coming while we being slaughtered. This is what you're saying. So you couldn't have been on the side of the Tecumseh. Not when we understand that these Ishmaelites fought alongside the Kentuckians. And the Kentuckians are the ones that killed the Tecumseh. So it's very uh, plausible that the Tecumseh was killed by the Ishmaelites. Yeah. Ain't no pointing fingers, it's just what it is. We kill each other every day. It's not hard to fathom. So X crossing, X marking a spot. You know, it really makes us think, like, where's this thing crisscrossing? We got Illinois. And this crisscross is definitely happening in, in Illinois, right? You got Chicago up top. You got the Moorish Science Temple at Pembroke, a small old African-American town. You got X marks the spot where the Battle of Tippecanoe happened that Tecumseh lost his brother, the prophet, Tenskatahawa. You got Morocco, Morocco setting up shop. That's interesting, Esteban. Esteban, that's interesting. Damn. How's Morocco setting up shop? You ever think about that? Mustafa, you ever think about that? <laughs> How's Morocco setting up shop? Esteban's the first person of African descent to explore America. He's a native of Morocco. How did Morocco get from there? Here. And what came first, the chicken or the egg? Before they claim it's their land and their promised land, you got to make it make sense. Where's Morocco? <laughs> Is it over there? Is it over here? Are you saying you started here? Okay, well, maybe Joshua divided the lands for the tribe. Maybe Hawa gave Moab some land right here in America somewhere. It is Shem's land, right? I could buy that. But does it mean that it all belongs to Ham and Cush? Ham and Cush? <laughs> does it mean that you get some takeover because you want all the promised land? There's something about you doing your hajj and making your pilgrimage around the holy mountain of harmonics. Did it do something to the frequency to cause a little ice age? The freezing over? And what does this freezing over have to do with Aquaman balls? What's it got to do with Aquaman balls? I mean, these are questions, my nag, is that 
at this point, it, it's all relative. You know, we could look at the maps of Illinois to try to get a specific spot that X is marking the spot. <laughs> Where does X mark the spot? I mean, we can get a general idea. I'm going to get some comments because some of my knockers, you know, have some real specific ideas. I want to get that. Um, look, man, I can't make this stuff up. It is the year of the dragon, right, my life? Yeah, make sure. Make sure it's the, yeah, it's the year of the dragon. That's crazy. It's crazy. And, of course, I know it's not our official New Year. So, my Monaga said, you know, it's not the New Year yet, drop. <laughs> yes, 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 my Monaga. I'm just saying we are headed towards. And we are already, you know, bathing in the mem songs. Of the Draga, <laughs> renew just symbolizes renewal, man. Renew, that's it. Don't don't be over, over drop it. Look, it's it's just renew, renew, okay, renew. And the next, well, actually, next year is the year of the snake, and it's funny, you know, just connecting this with gematria and the Hebrew gematria, twenty twenty five, you know, as up to, as up to nine, right and. The number nine in the Hebrew is uh, what's that? The the tet, I think the tet or the het, the the het or the tet, um, and it's a basket and it says snake. And again, snakes get a bad rap. It doesn't mean an evil or wicked. It just means you know, snake can refer to uh, you know being subtle and wise and different things. They say different attributes. So. Um, but it's interesting that 2025 is the year is the year of the snake, which adds up to the number nine, which also represents the the snake in the basket. <laughs> either you inside the basket, you outside the basket. You either you inside the fence, the tet, the het, in Hebrew. After you get your zan, the seventh letter, your zayah, your food, your cutoffness. Then you got your het. Then you got your tet. Right. Then you got your division. What's going in, what's going out again, separation is natural, my knock. It is the year of the track. So what's this crisscross uh, all about? This gives you a little, you know, you see being pal like this little piece, this little piece of uh, Illinois before it gets to, I believe that's Missouri. Well, we got Kentucky, we got Tennessee, all right? So just keeping that in mind, I'm just looking at these maps, trying to get more of a conclusive flow <laughs> for where this crisscross is happening. Let's do some investigation. All right, all right, Missouri. It should be Illinois right here. You got Chicago. Okay. 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 <laughs> Going back here, right? So, all right. You just see the bottom of this Illinois to the left here a little bit. That's where that crisscross is happening. To the best of what we can put together. So we got Chicago, all right, so the bottom of Illinois, right around here. Now, this map just got St. Louis, right? Missouri. Don't really have the, a big city that we can really connect to. Might be a small city. Uh, I've seen some of my Nagas say Cairo, because there's a Cairo down here, um, it's, which is crazy, right? Cairo, Egypt. <laughs> then you got Memphis, like Memphis, Egypt. And you got Atlanta, like Atlantis. A lot of things happening. <laughs> Let's get some more details, man. Just digging on some maps. Again, you got Illinois, but we don't have the details to know where this crisscross is happening because it's right around here at the bottom left. It's like right around here. 
One more time, one more time. Right? Right at the bottom left of Illinois. So they're going to give us the city. I had to go find a map of Illinois. I said, I need a map of Illinois. This is getting crazy. <laughs> we need maps of Illinois. This one should be okay. Yeah, we got some more details going now. So, but even this one, I don't think it's going to give me. I see St. Louis. Yeah, even this was not going to give me all the drop. So I had to find this Illinois map. There we go. And we go to the bottom, you know, leftish. You know, we got a couple things here. You got uh, Jonesboro, okay. Vienna, you got Marion. Murfreesboro. You got Benton. Now, this reminded me of the Benton, but I think that's the Alabama drop where they had the Naga cities underwater. Yeah, you know I mean, but you know, you got these cities now. Where's Cairo? Cairo's down here at the very bottom. So Cairo's not too far off either. Not too far off, man. Um, let's look at that eclipse uh, dramatization that we saw last time. Shout out to the Great American Eclipse dot com because. They've been watching this thing for a long time. Let's look at this and I want to get some comments and get some of your specifics. And then connect that to some of these uh, dragon lines, you know, ley lines, flow. I mean, whatever path this eclipse is on, you can all guarantee it's connected to the dragon lines, man. Can almost guarantee it. Crossing right through America, right, boss? Why America, boss? The inner black circle, the umbra, is where the shadow is complete, a total eclipse of the sun. The outer shadow circle, the penumbra, shows the extent of the partial eclipse. The partial eclipse will be slight near the outer circle and deep near the path of totality. In a deep partial eclipse, the sky will cool, sunlight will take on an airy quality. We encourage you, get inside the path of totality. Whoa, 99% is not the same as 100%. You will only see the corona when you are at 100% eclipse inside the path of totality, boss. Yeah. That's Missouri, St. Louis. That's Kentucky. We got the crisscross app right here in Illinois. Oh. And it's continue to cut through. I mean, it's not just, we're just talking about where it crisscrosses, but. You know, just check out the path, man. Cutting through Mexico, through Texas, right through Dallas, man. Shout out to my Dallas Fort Worth Nagas, man. My Houston Nagas, all my Nagas, man. Austin Nagas, San Antonio Nagas. Cutting through to Texas. Almost hitting Memphis, right? St. Louis, Missouri, my Missouri Nagas. Ohio Nagas, cutting right through Cleveland. Buffalo. I got a lot of uh, family up in Buffalo, Albany, all that, New York, Rochester, Toronto, cutting through Canada, Montreal, all right? So what a path, man, what a path. Stick on this path, man. What y'all think about that? Y'all let me know, man. Here we got the Illinois flows cutting through the Illinois flow. What do you see?
Right through Quebec. Okay. All right. All right. Sit a lower Durango. The same man as the year of the dragon, right? Kihawahawa, Kawahawala. Uh huh. All that. Koa, Hawala, Mexico, and then right through Texas. Right through Texas. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> we can put our energy to it <laughs> but it seems like this carries a vibration a vibration that can put you to sleep or wake your ass up you know a dragon could put you to sleep put you in a spirit of stupor <laughs> or wake your butt up you know what i mean um we're talking renewal my naga like we're talking about wakey wakey so you already know what time it is man it's going right over Danville. You know, Danville connected. Dan go right over Cherokee Village too. Right through Cherokee Village, Kentucky. All right, man. So Danville plays. Hold on, man. This is getting crazy. Cause Danville plays. Danville plays. So let's get back. <laughs> let's get back to the drop, right? Get cozy. All right. What does this got to do with where X marks the spot specifically? You see Indiana on one side, Illinois over here. All this is Illinois. X marks the spot. This thing's crossing right through. What's it got to do with the holy mount of harmonics? Where they put their Mahomet, Mahomet, right? Where they put their Morocco. We got to ask these questions. You can't just be married to something, Managa, today, and you're not flexible enough to see the truth. 1810, what's it got to do with you? What's it got to do with the tribe of Ishmael, <laughs> Managa, and the migration? You got the tribe of Ishmael popping off doing music and talking about gifted musicians at the same time as we being smollywop, smollywop by the invaders. Y'all playing music to our <laughs> invasion in 1785? You gonna have to make it make sense. You, you playing music to our invasion in 1775 to 1905? 1905? So you invaded throughout the whole thing, Ishmael. And what you stopped invading after <laughs> all the 1800s Texas Indian Wars and Cheyenne, Cheyenne, Apache, all the other wars are going on. The Philippines, which is still more melanated people. You've been invading all this time. So what is the 1900s going to hit for? You're in place <laughs> to pop off High City to be this revolution of black people that are Ishmaelites, black people that are Moabites, <laughs> now just popping off. While we don't know who we are, while we thought we got off a boat from Africa, 
<laughs> you can now take our place and then say, uh, black freedom, black freedom fighters, civil war. <laughs> I want to lead the blacks. What blacks? We, we, were, we were tribes. You made up this terminology called black, grouped us together into some black, black hole so that we forgot what the war is really looking like, what the war is really hidden for. That the copper color races found here are being invaded by those of African descent. As in, that this don't mean everybody, it just means what the power is looking like. Charles V is still looking like a Negro. He's back at Esteban Eco, the Negro. Columbus, St. Christopher, whether you say he exists or don't exist, somebody carried the Christ child over the water. <laughs> Christopher, we're just talking the Christ of Ophir. And Ophir relates to a city of gold, and Christ relates to anointed. So who's the anointed? Who are they calling the anointed one of the cities of gold? if not the Christ of Ophir, or Saint Stephen, the anointed of the gold, trying to bring them in to find the seven cities of gold, the fable seven cities of Cibola, Cibola, Cibola. Now you got Atlantis with their seven kingdoms, huh? Now you got Atlantis with their seven kingdoms. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Calm down, Drew. I'm just saying. <sighs> For X marking the spot to be crisscrossing. I mean, like. For it to be crisscrossing directly over Illinois like this, you know what I mean? And have that be the place of this Indiana flow where they were bringing in all these Ishmaelites and trying to take over this epicenter of Indianapolis where all these Indian in Dios, Dios means God, in God, in Hawa Khans, cold keeping Khans, push us out of these regions, right? Ship us off and make us do this whole Oklahoma situation and keep pushing us further west and different things like that. This was the epicenter of all the drop. And in the year of the dragon, we're about to see clearly, man. What's really real, what's really what, where we really are, that the frequency <laughs> is real, my nagi, that we are not no mythology, you know, and it's going to force Hijack City to see us through the creator's eyes, man, not just who we say we are, but they're going to see it through the creator's eyes who we are. <laughs> they're going to have to because it's get down or laid down. You know, those that are Baruch will see clearly. Signs, signals, monuments. That's what the Tao represents, the last letter of the Hebrew. is a sign, a signal, a monument. This X mark in the spot is a sign, a signal, a monument. We saw this thing crossing right over Danville, right? Right? See it again. Think it's play play? <laughs> Stop. Let's get it bigger. When you 
you see right here, Danville, D-A-N-ville. Now, didn't they have a Danville? What was it show? Phineas and Ferb. Right? Phineas and Ferb. I think they had a Danville. Could have had one on SpongeBob or something too. Um, but they kept putting this Danville in our face, man. Then you got the Heber Springs, my nigga. <laughs> the Eber Springs, my nigga. And the Heber is the Kiber or Clavera. Clavera is a city of gold. Now, we could lay to the Clavera near California, Arizona, all that, or we could talk about Clavera, Mexico, but it's all one land, one thing. And I see Danville, man. Danville. Danville here. <laughs> Danville here. D A N V I L E. Connected with the holy, so called holy mountain of harmonics. The formula for the holy mountain figure is supposedly contained in the odd dimensions of the so called cube. Built by Abraham and Ishmael. The same cube they're supposed to be walking around today, right? We're talking Mecca. It's already here in Illinois. What's it got to do with Cairo, boss? Cairo, boss. What's it got to do with Cairo? <laughs> Cairo is next to Mound City. I'm out of here, man. This is right in your face, bone. You got Shawnee Town, and Tacoma say his mama was a Shawnee, right? <laughs> so it's all happening. I just want you to see clearly that it's all happening. Right in your face, bro. You got the Shawnees, you got the Kumse Wars, Shikamagwe, you got the Ishmaelites migrating on the head bone of the Kumse during the war. So, there ain't no wiggle room. You got the Treaty of Peace and Friendship with 1786. Ishmael migrating 1785. Y'all got some explaining to do. Because Dragon Canoe's at war against the hijack. You just getting shipped in, fighting with the Kentuckians against the natives, against the Nagas right here in America. Now you want to claim something? You want to claim Morocco? 1787, 1786, you come with the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. So now these tribes, these melanated tribes, have to fight side by side with the corporation of the United States of America, boss. And their enemies are your enemies, and your enemies are their enemies, and y'all can't make slaves of each other anymore. So that means you you tribed up with the enemy. And that's why <laughs> we couldn't tribe up with each other when Takumse tried to get us to. We said, nah, we... <laughs> the white man never did nothing to us. <laughs> he promised us all kind of goodies. Now it's 2024. Where's your goodies? Where's your things? Where's your stuff, my nigga? Eighteen eleven. It's come say comment. They're going to call it the Great Comet of 1811. Don't forget. When we talk Comet in the 1950s, Cometa. We're talking about an igneous meteor, fire, fiery pillars. 
We're talking about a nucleus, a tail, something like a tail, a beard, and tangled locks, boss. I'm out of here, boss. <coughs> I'm out of here, man. Five o'clock, I'm going to sleep. I'm out of here. You ain't going to just throw tangled locks in a beard and tail and not be talking dragon. A beard and tangled locks. We're going to actually get more of this because there's a few pages to this joint. But... Elizabeth A. Warner, she's breaking down the connection between meteors, comets, not always clearly distinguished from meteors and such beliefs, and dragons. Meteors and dragons are connected. Meteors and dragons are connected. So if I dig on the 1828, Noah Webster Dictionary, right, whether we're talking about seraph, Highest order of angels, which just connects to the burning ones, singing holy, holy in Isaiah chapter 6 to Hawa, with six wings, by now, dragons, burning ones. Anytime we're talking, um, you know, like Numbers 21 and Moses with the fiery serpents, it's always connected with the seraphim. Highest order of dragon, boss. And if I say dragon in 1828, they just going to say <laughs> shooting meteor. But a meteor is a dragon. Beard. Tail, beard, tangle locks. Start with a tail. To the simple folk. <laughs> Falling stars and meteors. Simple folk take falling stars and meteors to be dragons, fiery beasts, <laughs> flying fiery beasts. He derives the origin of the dragon from various natural phenomena, which seem to conjure up the image of a flying fiery beast. Wrong. <laughs> a dragon is a meteor. It's also a it's also you, my naga, when you fighting against the hijack, you violent, you fierce. Male or female, this man or woman is a dragon. Anytime you're mad at them, you're in dragon mode. <laughs> you're a Draco. <laughs> you're a meteor. You're a Preston. Look out for Preston 120. Because a Preston, a Preston is a meteor. <laughs> Thrown from the cloud with such violence, fierce and violent person, this man and woman is a dragon. It's going to set everything on fire. My dragons, my nagas, do you see clearly? Meteor, comet, dragon. Of 1811, they say this dragon was visible to the naked eye for around 260 days. When was the last meteor you could see for 260 days with the naked eye? I'll wait. This was certainly a great comet. This was certainly a great dragon. Crisscrossing on your head, Paul. The longest recorded period of visibility until the appearance of Comet Hale Bob 1997, another dragon. Waking you up or putting your ass to sleep into a coma. Uh oh. <laughs> Spirit of stupor, huh? All right. Now, this is deep, you know, this is deep. This large coma reaching one million miles across. 
That's a big dragon in the in the in the ether waters, right? It's just sw swimming across the ether water. Uh oh, the Shawnee military leader Tacombs. I knew Tacombs had something to do with this comic, whose name was translated as Shooting Star or Star with a Tail, Beard, Tangle Locks. Got it. Claimed the appearance of the comic as a favorable omen during his mostly unsuccessful efforts that year to bring the Southern tribes into the Pan Native American alliance. So before they get on this Pan African, you were pan native, my nigga. Native to the earth, native to the soil. Before they put you in one place, you were tribed up. And it was unsuccessful because these other tribes wanted to be down with the treaties. It wasn't unsuccessful on Tacombsay's part. It's unsuccessful that these tribes chose to make a deal with the devil out of jealousy and hatred and envy. Couldn't tribe up. Same thing the hijack do today. Promise you all kinds of stuff. Look at the NFL. All of our Israelite soldiers, <laughs> the biggest, baddest nagas on the planet, on the plane, <laughs> NBA. They'll take that paycheck instead of really saying, "Yo, I'm here to protect my nagas. I'm here to stand firm with the rest of the NFL." CFL, all the FLs, <laughs> the, the big Naga convention is supposed to come together and say, yo, will you need us? <laughs> we need to we need to protect our tribe. We need to build for Nagaville. But it's beautiful because a lot of my Nagas are coming out that stupor, out that spirit of slumber, and they are popping off like that. They're like, yo, you know what? I got something to say. I'm talking about it. I'm speaking on it. Now, they also connected this comet to Napoleon. And it was called Napoleon's Comet. And, you know, read that story. Napoleon's Comet, right? This dragon was popularly thought to have portended Napoleon's invasion of Russia. And that's an interesting story because he got shook. Something shook him up. Now, this is the same dragon that chases Napoleon out of Russia. It's the same dragon that the Kumse saw as a good, a favorable sign. But, you know, seeing that he passed away shortly after, you know, only to the unwise do they seem to die. Um, you know, it definitely was a sign. You know, it definitely was a sign. I'm talking about pan-native, right? What is a native? What is a native? Produced by nature. Can we be pan-native, man? You want to give your native image to somebody else? Because they, cause they say you got off a boat, boss. To be pan-native is to be pan-natural <laughs> by law. To be pan-original. Can we be original? Can we be pan-born with the being, my nigga? <laughs> Natural by law. Not acquired, no. Not brought here, no. <laughs> nah, creator, because... What's nature? What's nature? In a general sense, whatever is made or produced, a word that comprehends all the works of God. Stop. Can we be Pan-Hawa? They want us to be Pan-African. I'm trying to be Pan-Creator. I'm trying to be, you know, tribed up with the Creator. Can we tribe up around MHOE, around the commandments, around the code, KTC. That means keep the code. I want to be paid 
Hawa, which is pan nature, which is pan native. Pan native. That's what the Kuhn say he's talking about. They know he's a Hebrew. This is the last Hebrew stab, Anagi. And I believe this is where X is marking a spot. You know, just like it's showing the last, uh, you know, battle of typical new, right? Where X is marking a spot. One of our last fights before Tukumse is killed, I believe, near Ontario, right? Dragon lines, ley lines. Antarctica. Or Calcum. <laughs> Leviathan. Just right quick. Pull up the links, my naga. We're just talking Leviathan. This is small, so you got to pull up the links to dig all this, uh, you know, specifically. Let's go to the fifth day. Love to the sister Larissa who dropped this years ago, man. I always like to come back to it because it just, add, you know, adds a lot of intrigue and a lot of intriguing questions, man, about the vibe. And now, let's just get it. On the fifth day of creation, Hawa took fire and water, and out of these two elements, he made the fish of the sea. Water and fire. The animals in the water are much more numerous than those on land. For every species on land, excepting only the weasel, there is a corresponding species in the water. And besides, there are many found only in the water. The ruler over the sea animals is Leviathan. With all the other fish, he was made on the fifth day. Originally, he was created male and female like all the other animals. But when it appeared that a pair of these monsters might annihilate the whole earth with their united strength, Hawa killed the female. So enormous is Leviathan that to quench his thirst, he needs all the water that flows from the Jordan into the sea. His food consists of the fish which go between his jaws of their own accord. When he is hungry, a hot breath blows from his nostrils and it makes the waters of the great sea seething hot. Hot springs, my knock. Formidable, though Behemoth, the other monster, is he feels insecure until he is certain that Leviathan has satisfied his thirst. The only thing that can keep him in check is the stickleback, a little fish which was created for the purpose and of which he stands in awe. But Leviathan is more than merely large and strong. He is wonderfully made besides. His fins radiate brilliant light. The very sun is obscured by it. The sun is obscured by the radiate the radiant light, Managa, of Leviathan fins. The pulsating light of his fins sound like Godzilla, man. <laughs> the very sun is obscured by it, and also his eyes shed such splendor that frequently the sea is illuminated suddenly by it. Wow. No wonder that this marvelous beast is the plaything of a while, right? Ancient 
in whom he takes his pastime. So this can't be Satan, <laughs> right? They try to make Leviathan like some type of demon Satan situation in etymology, right? We're talking dragon lines. Got to talk Leviathan. And when you put in Leviathan, what do you get? Yeah, 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 dragon. Okay. <laughs> law, yeah. Law. That's where you get the law. The law. Levi. Look at that. A form of Satan. Sometimes regarded as a form of Satan. <clears throat> All right, man, give some water, man. Oh, okay, okay. So I've been popping off. I'm like, I've been popping off. So how can Leviathan go from Wise play thing to sometimes regarded as a form of Satan. I thought he was just a wise play thing, right? A wise partner. You know, the pet a wise play with, you know, a wise pet, however you want to say it. So what happens? There is but one thing that makes Leviathan repulsive, his foul smell, which is so strong that if it penetrated thither, it would render paradise itself an impossible abode. The real purpose of Leviathan mm, is to be served up as a dainty to the pious in the world to come. So the real purpose of Leviathan is food, Managa, to the pious or righteous in the world to come. And what happens when the Israelites go into the wilderness and they get the manna raining, the manna, you know what I mean? <laughs> come. So the female was put into brine as soon as she was killed to be preserved against the time when her flesh will be needed. Hmm. <laughs> Wah wah! I mean, you can't argue with, you know, what I'm saying purpose and strategy or whatever it is. So, the male is destined to offer a delectable sight to all beholders before he is consumed. When his last hour arrives, Hawa will summon the angels to enter into combat with Leviathan, the monster. They say, but no sooner will Leviathan cast his glance at them then they will flee in fear and dismay from the field of battle. So this is a twist on what happened with the angel Michael battling the dragon, right? <laughs> it's a twist of the story. Oh, angel Michael battled the dragon. Nah, angel Michael fleed <laughs> flee with all his heart. He fleed the same, man. Leviathan cast his glance. Angel Michael got the hell out of there. <laughs> they had to flee in fear. Because Angel Michael don't want no part of this. New Testament Angel Michael don't want no part of a wise play thing dragon. They will return to the charge with swords, but in vain. For Leviathan scales can turn back still like straw. They will be equally unsuccessful when they attempt to kill him by throwing darts, slinging stones, just like uh, Operation, um, which one is it? Uh, not Paperclip, not High Jump, Fishbowl. Yeah, just like Fishbowl. 
Such missiles will rebound without leaving the least impression on his body. Then we got to thinking, did Hawaii use Leviathan scales to form the firmament since it's so large, right? So, okay. Disheartened, the angels will give up combat and Hawaii will command Leviathan and Behemoth to enter into a duel. Okay. It's an interesting take on things at the sacred text. With each other, the, the issue will be that both will drop dead, Behemoth, Slaughtered by a blow of Leviathan's fins and Leviathan killed by a slash or lash of Behemoth's tail. And Mud Fossil University got a whole flow on this where he's finding some evidence of Leviathan and Behemoth going to war. And that dragon is right in Morocco, right? So, Morocco plays from the skin of Leviathan. Look at this. From the skin of Leviathan. Hawa will construct tents to shelter companies of the righteous or pious. So, firmament, canopy, tents constructed of Leviathan scales <laughs> that turn back missiles like it ain't nothing, right? Such missiles will rebound. <laughs> so, what are they shooting up? Their rockets for trying to get through these scales of this unpenetrable, impenetrable, you know, dragon man. <clears throat> now the skin of Leviathan, right, will construct tents to shelter companies of the pious while they enjoy the dishes made of his flesh. The amount assigned to each of the pious will be in proportion to his deserts. And none will envy or begrudge the other his better share. What is left of Leviathan skin, look at that, <laughs> my bad, will be stretched over Jerusalem as a canopy, my life. <laughs> so am I overdropping <laughs> to think that hmm, Leviathan skin or scales that rebound the missiles off in the sacred text is being stretched out over Jerusalem as a canopy Manak. now is that specific to this area or all the earth plain how far does the canopy go it says out over Jerusalem when they do their operation fishbowl and they're shooting up missiles out of the deserts in, the, in America, Hawaii and all that. Are they doing it in Europe or are they just doing it over here in Jerusalem or not? Trying to penetrate. And the light streaming from it will illuminate the whole world. What's that blue sky about? <laughs> and what is left of the flesh after the pious or righteous have a peace their appetite will be distributed among the rest of men to carry on traffic there with wow okay <laughs> and just digging on the targa my naga well first you know digging on uh, the JPS to not Psalms 74 digging with this dragon flow you know Leviathan was a sacrifice in the sacred text not just for food but his scales were stretched out like a canopy and the female was was sacrificed first for that same purpose to feed the righteous some confirmation is that it's right here in Psalm 74 verse 12 yet a wise my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. Thou did break the sea into pieces by thy strength. Thou did shatter the heads of the sea monsters in the water. Thou did crush the heads of Leviathan. Multiple head Leviathan, just like the multiple head dragon in the book of Revelations. Letting you know that this has been shadowed in the New Testament. 
flipped up and the stories flipped with Michael going in war against the dragon. That's all about Leviathan. He too has multiple heads. And he's a sacrifice. Instead of being the villain in the New Testament, Leviathan is the sacrifice for the righteous. And now you want to say sometimes regarded as a form of Satan, boss? Sometimes, boss? How? When Leviathan is a righteous sacrifice. He's bending, he's twisting, not because he has an attitude problem, because you're talking about a dragon. Levi, Lawa, the law dragon, a wise dragon. Now he's sometimes regarded as a form of Satan in the New Testament. I think y'all tripping. I think you're out of nature. <laughs> you're out of perspective with the native. Produced by nature, not factitious or artificial. A native or auracalcum. What's the color of the auracalcum copper? Cod. And what's an American? What's an American? Oh, the originals again? The copper or calcum color? <laughs> the red ruddy, reddish ruddy? Okay. So the great American comet <laughs> of 1811, the Coombsay comet is what they call it. It's happening in the same year of the Kunsei's War. Now you fast forward to 2024. And you got Phineas crisscrossing all on top of your head bone. And we're all, you know, asking what does it mean in the year of the dragon? What does it mean? Leviathan's heads were, heads were crushed. Thou gave him to be food to the folk inhabiting the wilderness. Just like it said in the sacred text. Food to the, to the pious, to the righteous. Now you want to know an interesting translation is the Targum. Because they, they go all the way there with it. They... they <laughs> They talking about pharaohs, right? So Psalm 74, but God is the king, Hawa is the king, whose holy presence is from of old, one who carries out redemption in the midst of the land. You cut off the waters of the sea by your power. You broke the heads of the sea serpents and drowned the Egyptians at the sea. You shattered the heads of Pharaoh's warriors. You handed them over for destruction to the people of the house of Israel and their corpses to jackals. <laughs> so that dragon being uh, sacrificed is really <laughs> Pharaoh's warriors that are being handed over for destruction to the house of Israel. And that's an amazing take on things, right? We got to keep digging on this Targum flow because it's right there. <laughs> It's right there in your face, man. So, all right, all right. I want to belly flop uh, into this. Matter of fact, hold up. Yeah, let's let's get this. Uh, let's get some more dragon lines dropped before I want to belly flop into this hundred monkey experiment drop. You know what I mean? I'm just having a good time. Back to the oracalcum flow. I let go. Ley lines, love to con tab dot net. Ley lines are otherwise called dragon lines. Again, I'm just we just trying to figure out what trajectory this great American eclipse thing is on, right? So, the ley lines are otherwise called dragon lines, not that they were air corridors for latter day pterodactyls, <laughs> where we now have concords instead. 
and are supposed to link up power points and carry electromagnetic forces to their more way out adherents. Hmm. Is this crisscross 2024 carrying any type of PowerPoint electromagnetic force, my nigga? Does that have anything to do with your awareness? If it's carrying electromagnetic forces by their more way out adherents, a number of activities are carried out by ley line seekers, such as twitching hazel rods on ancient British earthworks and holding mystical visuals in the hope of being visited by flying saucers. They going crazy. Hijack city. <coughs> All right. So to the average citizen, the recent subculture is a harmless and somewhat zany eccentricity, but no more objectionable or subversive to the state and worship of pre-1940 steam engines or the deification of Georgie Best or the Bay City Rollers. All right, man. I hope that serious geomancers will forgive my flippancy in this matter. Every predominant culture has some kind of power grid. Where's your power grid, my naga? I'm not saying of black people. I'm saying of your tribe. I'm saying of Tecumseh. I'm saying of the Israelites. Where's your light? Where's your power? Where's your dragon? Because the dragon is the light. Leviathan. <laughs> the dragon. Dragon is the light. What does the dragon lines have to do with the light, the Zora, the Torah, right? To see. Tani. Dirt. See clearly. But the light you see clearly. Dragon lines has to do with seeing clearly. PowerPoints. So every predominant culture has some kind of power grid, which has a certain pattern. Romans had a grid of military roles being military rulers and the precursors of the centralized state. <clears throat> Their grid looks remarkably like the motorway map of the 1970s Britain centering on London town. All right, then it goes into the Celts. They had a grid line of fire signal communications, beacons that warned of threats of invasions and places are named to indicate. All right. We're talking about a, a grid. The Incas had their grid, a communications network of major highways like uh, Nazca lines, right? On the cross pattern centering on Lima and Cusco with the system of postal runners, a kind of crude GPO, to ensure central power worked well. All right. As the national grid defines majority nature of modern Britain, Britain, the uh, ley line, dragon line grid, defines the nature of the prehistoric animalistic tribal society that held certain places along these lines as being more sacred boss. Sacred boss. Focal points of mysterious forces in the search to tap their power, the same motive as for the metal national grid. We have mentioned elsewhere how the cerebral Cro Magnons sought to tap the magic they believed tappable. By the cerebellic nature conscious Neanderthals. Hmm, this is not nonsense. The Kalahari Bushmen know when an antelope is near, when it is at miles distance, as the Australian Aborigines can locate 
a minute object in hundreds of miles of desert. How in the complex relationship between Artos, Lugres, and the white goddess priestess of Britain, hijacks the tea, <laughs> the male warriors constantly seek the secret, the holy grail of the dragon. They say serpent slash dragon cult. No, you're talking about dragon nuggets, man. And a cult relates to agriculture, right? <laughs> and a cult relates to cultivation, right? So would you like to cultivate? <laughs> would you like to be agricultural, right? So don't let them flip you with this cult situation. We're just talking about tribe that... Is separate, natural by law, with magical powers. Dragon, not the serpent, because remember alchemy, there's a difference between the serpent and the dragon. So no longer can they throw this serpent business, fiery flying serpent at us. We know that the dragon is not the serpent. The impersonal serpent kills everything. It's impersonal. <laughs> the dragon, my nugget, yeah, represents that life. It is the vessel in which the spirit is contained. They can't give you no read on it. It's unknown to the hijack. We talked in life. We're talking where the living spirit can be extracted. Which is why they slay the dragon. Conientio, right? The coming together of opposites. What are they spraying in the skies? The coming together of opposites. What are they putting on the news, the TV? The coming together of opposites. Your images, everything has to do with the opposites, gangs, BDGD, uh, Crip Blood, whatever. Coming together of opposites. Republican, Democrat, man. Red, blue. But when they come together, they really form the crown, the purple. The Cadmus embodies the fixed and proper of self. What are they spraying in the sky? And how can the dragon, alchemically speaking, be the serpent? How can those two agree? We're talking Holy Grail, my life. Something about these aborigines, these originals, they are in the frequency to see clearly the secret of the grail of the dragon, Anaga. not the serpent, not the impersonal, <laughs> but we're talking about the vessel in which the spirit is contained, which is the guardian angel or dragon of your spirit. If your spirit is contained within this vessel, if your spirit is contained within the vessel of not the serpent, oh no, of the dragon. So it's saying the dragon is not itself the living spirit, it's the guardian, it's the vessel in which that Ruach is content. Con. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, this is a great doc. I always get a little bit of it at a time, but, wow. Dragons, dragons everywhere. I'm just digging on it, man. 
It's a lot of trap in this joint. Yeah. They're connecting with the Adam and Eve flow, the flaming swords, which is the dragon. Guardian, guardians. St. Patrick drives the snake out of Ireland while St. Nia chases them off Bodmon Moor. And St. George slays one in England. So there, these hijacked dark skinned tribes are slaying the dragon. You, Monaga, are riding the dragon. You got the dragon riders, you got dragon slayers, man. Undoubtedly, well, let's get it from here. To the followers of the ancient matriarchal religion, the earth was like a great woman's body. With power flows crisscrossing it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Hmm. Bad job. I'm getting, I'm getting leaky. I'm getting leaky. With power flows crisscrossing this. So ain't no way it's crisscross applesauce. It's by accident, man. That's all we saying as we investigate. It seems to be all connected with energy, frequency, and vibration. Back it up. In Hindu mythology, the dragon serpent was Kundalini or Kandalana. The power serpent, or again, it's not serpent, it's dragon. Because the alchemical serpent is not the alchemical dragon. This Kundalini is not the impersonal. This Kundalini is the unknown substance. And the Kun <laughs> is the Khan or the Quam or the Kum, which means to rise. And we're talking about a dragon that's rising, which was coiled around the base of one's spine, where the adrenaline glands were located. If one loosed the power of the Kundalini or set loose the dragon, my Naga, huh? So we're not talking serpent no more. We're just talking dragon. Okay. <laughs> so if you can let that dragon loose, it could overpower you if you ain't ready for it. <laughs> you became dominated by your emotions, hence to kill or control, bind up the dragon for a thousand years, back to the revelation flow. They, they're getting deep on us. Was to master your emotions and become the cold, abstract, thinking man of power. You were, in other words, destroying your natural personality and were off of on a power trip. <laughs> I mean, look, they can interpret all they want. We know that when we lose the drag, you know, we can overpower them. <laughs> we can dominate their emotions. <laughs> kind of. Yes, you do have to know the, how to control your dragon. You got to know how to ride your dragon. You got to tribe up with yourself. And by keeping the code, it gains your control. It puts you in control. To the followers of the ancient matriarchal religion, the earth was like a great woman's body with power flows crisscrossing it as in acupuncture. The human body is said to have many different power lines through which the key, right? Like the key of wah, wah or yin yang energy flows, the meeting points, the tau, <coughs> shall like the intersecting lines of the two currents were held to be power points fertilized by the mother dragon. I said the meeting points of the two currents were held to be power points fertilized by Big Mama. Undoubtedly, these were sacred 
sites where the dragon of wisdom in Mexico, we got the Kitsukawaru. And dodge the hijack because they want to throw everything. Because everything ain't Big Mama, but they're going to throw in the Python of Delphi and the Idris of Islam, which is the Thoth flow. And the Thoth flow is not the Kitsukawaru flow. We've done major drops on that. Um, but they tried to duplicate the Feather Dragon Kitsukawaru into their Thoth flow. Just like they got two Enoch, two Enochs, they got two Kitsukawarus. So you got to dodge all the hijack, man. But K9 equals Leviathan. I mean, really, man? Really, man? Unless you're talking Adia. <laughs> the Dragon of Wisdom could also be responsible for the Loch Ness Monster story. The picks. Oh, yeah, we got to get our pick series. Aqua Tabeza. Shout out to Ty Bad. Ty Batters, man. Got a great channel popping off on YouTube. All her flow popping off. Soul Bone Podcast on IG. Let's go, man. We all the way up. The picks were matrial linear people claiming descent through the female line, though they had kings. These kings were probably princes who married the local princess, as in the Sleeping Beauty legend. Well, in the case of Sheba and Salima, <laughs> you're talking about Framer and Shaper. Dragon Slayers, because they want to find a way to put out your light and slay the dragon. A little more of this uh, Meteor Beliefs Project, Dragons as Meteors or Comets. Elizabeth A. Warner. Now, the folk imagination created mythical, mythic images personified aerial meteors, falling stars, especially lightning. Even today, in the mid 19th century, he continues simple folks take fallen stars and meteors to be dragons. Well, maybe because they are. Alphonse comments on, let's get it. Next page, let's see what we got. A couple of early Russian references to heavenly bodies compared to dragons. Of particular interest is a description of several meteors which appeared in 1662 and 1663 in Belarusia. Right? The first meteor is described as follows. There appeared something like a huge star and it rushed across the sky with the speed of lightning, and the sky was split in two, and a head and tail all on fire stretched out across the sky like a dragon. And it remained there for about half an hour. Have you ever seen something like this? And just normally it's a quick flash, but these things hung out. <laughs> the Great Comet, 18... 11, it hung out for 260-something days. They could see it with the bear, with the naked eye. This hung out for half an hour, just chill, looking like a dragon, right? The second description is shorter. The object stretched out across the sky like a huge dragon, all on fire, and smoke issued from it, my naga. Smoke issued from this dragon in the sky sky. Right. Huge dragon all on fire. Smoke issued from it. In the original, the fiery object is referred to as a star, while Afonsiev assumes that it was a meteor. In his later monumental work on Russian mythology, the poetic views of the Slavs on nature, Afonsiev, repeats much of the same ideas about meteors and fallen stars being visualized as dragons. He quotes several chronicles entries about dragon-shaped, fiery, heavenly bodies. Thus, in 1028, quote, a dragon-shaped sign appeared in the heavens, visible to the whole earth. A dragon-shaped 
sign, my nigga. Visible to the whole earth, that means you're not on no ball. Because it wouldn't be visible to somebody on the side of the ball or underneath on the bottom of the ball. <laughs> oh, it's not literal, drop. Well, when you're on a flat plane, up is up to everybody. And everything can be visible to everybody at the same time. Which is what the prophets talk about when, you know, Hawaii makes that triumphant return. Everybody will be able to witness it. In 1144, a strange object was seen beyond the Dnieper, D-N-I-E-P-R, in Kiev, in Russia. All right. There flew from the sky to earth something resembling a fiery circle, which left in its wake a sign in the shape of a great dragon. In 1558, there was a sign from the place where a star had been in the sky. An object shaped like a dragon appeared with no head but a tail like a trunk. And then it became like a barrel and fell to earth in flames and what appeared to be smoke covered the ground. To these we might add the following chronicle entry in 1091 when Vesevaluch was out hunting beyond Vishkorod, a huge serpent dragon. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Lost my place when I did that. Okay. A huge serpent dragon fell from the sky and everyone was struck with ter terror. At the same time, the earth rumbled so that many heard it. In volume one of the Poetic Views of the Slav on Nature, page 74, Alphonse Nizev mentions the commonly held association between comets and, quote, stars with tails. According to Alvas Nasev, it was the very rarity of the arrival of comets that led simple people to regard them as a warning from God of the disasters ahead which, with which he would punish their sins. Well, Numbers 21, fiery, ser fiery flying serpents, right? So the link between unusual and frightening displays in the sky and impending doom is stated unambiguously in the chronicle reference in 1202 quoted unfortunately without a reference to his exact source by M.I. Kastorsky, Kastorsky an early work on Slav, Slavonic mythology. In 1202 at 5 o'clock in the morning the sky flooded over with scarlet like blood so that the snow lying on the ground and on the houses seem suffused with blood. Now in 1202, ain't that when Genghis Khan uh, rolled up on Presta John, if you rocking with the Presta series, right? So think about those dates. And then that, just like 1811 has a common associated with that, 1202 had a sign when Presta got invaded by Genghis Khan. And had the biggest war war you never heard about. Dragons and everything. Now the sky was like blood red. So that the snow lying on the ground and on the houses seemed suffused with blood. And many people witnessed the passage of stars across the sky. The stars fell out of the sky onto the earth. And the people who saw this were much afraid. Thinking that the end of the world was, was near. Although the quotation appears... In the context of, quote, fiery dragons, it does not make a specific connection between the meteor shower and dragons. On the other hand, Kostorsky makes a definite link between dragons and thunderstorms. Quote, when they tumble, <coughs> when they tumble and twist and roll over the fields across bars and rooftops. Hmm. They tumble and twist. <laughs> Roll over the fields across barns and rooftops. Quoting from N.I. Karamzin's History of the Russian State, Katorsky refers to a thunderstorm in Novgorod in February 1215, during which, quote, there was a dragon flying. You think it's play play? 
He, he said it's a dragonfly, man. <laughs> I mean, what, what else do you want, man? What else do y'all want, man? <laughs> I'm going to leave this, man. I'm going to get a little more of a time. It's got a lot more to dig on, but you see how they are connecting dragons with meteors, my nigga, right in your face, ball. Now, let's get this piece of this drop from the 100th Monkey Experiment, man. And we'll talk some orichalcum for the dismount. And some cities of gold. A phenomena. Let's go. Which arrests the attention and causes a person to stand and gaze at the phenomena. At the wonder. I'm just talking about one comment. <laughs> now, shout out to all my noggers leaving great comments, man. I mean, look at these comments, man. Look at them, man. Allow up. Allow up. For you, uh, you know what I mean? I love your comments, man, and y'all really do. It's not just a, a button I press. I really do love your comments. So, again, the 100 monkey effect is a phenomenon or a wonder, a marvel, a dragon, okay, in which a new behavior like keeping the code when you've been out of code for so long and caught up in all these religions that are all lead you to something else oh God. other than the creator other than hawa because you're not putting the most high first oh, you just true. you use it for talking points but you're always praising someone else and having to go through someone else to get to the person you're trying to get to well, that's a phenomenon because Hawa said no other power before your power. It's a phenomenon. It's a marvel. It's a new behavior that you're yelling KTC because you was not yelling KTC seven years ago. I was there. I was looking. Wasn't no KTC MHOE. Wasn't no man sauce. This is a new behavior. <laughs> For these Nagas in this generation, in this consciousness, this is a new behavior you're talking about. Yeah, they know about the Ten Commandments, but do they keep them? Are they keeping their Shabbat? Okay. Are they putting the most out of everything? Are they slaying their own brothers? Are they stealing, jacking, mm. jacking their own Nagas? Are they honoring their Framer in their shape or their mother, their father? Are they keeping their frequency high? Are they, are they avoiding mixing into lower vibrations? Are they avoiding the adultery? Whenever you got an idol, that's automatic adultery. <laughs> All idolatry is adultery. You're mixing in a false energy with the real power mm. most high over everything That's cool. who only told you to keep the code but now it's a new behavior now it's a phenomenon and you are a marvel a wonder they're wondering why you haven't been keeping the code it's in their religions they act like it's impossible <laughs> to rest Every seven days. And remember, Hawa created the earth in six days. Quote, unquote, days. <laughs> we got to dig on these days, man. <laughs> and rested on the seventh day. It's the rest. It's not about arguing which day on the Julian calendar, Gregorian calendar. It's the rest. All the days are Hawa's days. God. All the days we take them back. Whatever day you resting, you resting. But on this calendar, we count to seven and we resting to make it easy without no extra, you know, bit of debating over oh Wednesday and then next week is Thursday. We rest <coughs> and we won't be a wonder no more. God. A wonder how these people been staying at the bottom when they have all the power. You, they're supposed to wonder at you like, wow, look how 
marvelous they are. Instead, they wonder at us and like, a sh like shame. Like, how can you not tribe up? Where is your land? Where is your Hawa? Why are you so separated? Why are you so against each other? Violent towards each other. We're, we're dragons against each other, right? The worst war you could have is a dragon on dragon war. More on more, right? Yeah, it's a wonder, man. Love to swat for putting us on the hundredth monkey effect. You know, really bringing us into our consciousness. Could we talk quantum? And we saw some of this years ago off the balcony. <laughs> Just the hundred monkey effect. For those that don't know, look to the bro SWAT. Definition, the hundred monkey effect is a phenomenon in which a new behavior or idea <laughs> is spread rapidly by unexplained means. No one knows where we came from. We are the substance of unknown origin, my knife. They didn't see us coming, car. Huh? Unexplained means from one group to all related groups. Once a critical number of members of one group exhibit the new behavior or acknowledge the new idea. KTC might seem like a new idea because we haven't been doing it. You know, we've been doing Christianity, we've been doing Islam, we've been doing all religious, not keeping our code. Rule number one, most high over everything. We don't put no JC first, no Bahamut first, no nothing first but the almighty breath and security. And if we can all agree on that, it's MHOE, it's most high over everything. We didn't need Christianity or Islam to bring us to say, oh, let's put the creator first. And in doing so, let's listen to our frame and our shaper. Let's stop the adultery. Let's stop the murder. Let's stop stealing our <laughs> each other's lands and each other's things, right? So let's be safe. Let's, let's have a safe environment with our tribe. Let's raise our frequency. No more false witnessing. No more covetous in our heart bone, man. Like, this is a new idea when you ain't done it in so long. As the new idea and behavior travel through the ether, man. Because <laughs> only the ether can explain why all these nuggets suddenly get it. Let's keep the code. We keep the code. We already won. Natural by law already told us this, man. <laughs> We keep the code we already want. Because what's the result? You get your land back. You get to be in the sanctuary, the protection of Hawaii. You get your guardian dragons popping off. Man, about seven years ago, uh, with the spirit science, we might get a quick clip of that. <laughs> so, new behavior, idea is spread rapidly. A why, why? Now you hearing it. <laughs> Seven years ago, you weren't hearing hawa hawa. Now it's new behavior. It just makes sense. Ha, wa, wa. We fire dance. Ha is the breath. Wa is the foundation security. Let go. Ha, your fifth letter. Of Picto Paleo Hebrew. Wah, your sixth letter of Picto Paleo Hebrew. They say, hey, Vav. No, ha, wah. Breath. <gasps> wah. Let's see, a dragon sounds like he says, wall, when he breathes fire, when she breathes fire. The wall is the <gasps> wah. Fire. The water, the ether, the earth. That's new behavior. That's a new idea being reintroduced from the ancient love song. A new idea that, of course, isn't very new, but you must be connected with the water that to the ancient love song. So, Managa, this is about you. He said, brother, you spark, but Managa, this is about drop nation. 
your constant participation and communication and just your AHOP and your energy, your frequency has led us to asking all these questions. And that's why we're talking quantum and, you know what I'm saying, the quantum double slit experiment and, you know, the wave pattern. Is it a particle? Is it a wave? Is it all happening when it's being measured or not measured? All the wave is being accomplished when you're not witnessing. So when you do witness, it's now hitting one possibility. So how do you know that when you're not witnessing, it's all happening? It's not all happening. How do we know that when we close our eyes at night, whatever we think is happening in the street is happening? <laughs> when it's all happening, when you're not witnessing it, because mm. a particle knows when it's being measured, and that's at the root of quantum. Bang. It's the full wave, so this is not a conspiracy to debunk. It just makes sense that, you know, a message, uh, a behavior can be spread in the ether, such as a very small and precise idea like the movie Inception a specific idea is the most dangerous thing to the hijack because it spreads so rapidly and the idea that is so basic and specific as keeping the code which is new behavior to these noggins in 2022 2024 is a phenomenon but we're just talking marvels. Admiration is what they have for you when you are being you. Mm. But who's the marvel of Peru? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, this is where you're getting your miracles from. Yeah. Your mirror. Ooh. That ether mirror. They got an ether mirror in the cities of gold. Um, you know, I mean, someone got their hand on a mirror that can see everything in all the kingdoms, just like the Preston John mirror, right? The Marvel, you know, Preston John is a Marvel character. So, uh, go get this drop. I just dropped it on the Patreon, you know, what I mean, just to keep the water flowing as we start discussing these topics and just get deeper, man. Just get deeper, man. Um, man, we almost out of here, man. Oh, man, yeah, I got. So much more I feel like I got to talk about, man. But, you know, we've been digging on the oracalcum flow, man. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and make an oracalcum dismount. We can go ahead and make an oracalcum dismount. Man. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Shall I? <coughs> I'm out of here, man. I'm out of here. Say, drop you over, drop me. Get some rest, man. Some cool little fandom, you know, something for you to dig on, you know. Um, started pulling in a lot of kind of interesting details about this Oracle Laboratory. Oh, we got the mirror. Bang, look at that belly flop. All right. <laughs> the marvel is the mirror. <laughs> They find the ether mirror, which can see any place on Earth, just like that Preston John flow. And locate the seventh city. And in the Aquaman, the seventh city was supposed to be the Oracalcum city. And it's supposed to be some evil thing, but was it really? Was it really? Man. It moves, never staying twice in the same place. That's when they spot something in the ocean, the ruins of Atlantis. Esteban is intrigued and needs to go see it. He, he takes a strange key, which was a big part of some machine. Anger, the city closes down. You think this stuff is play play, man? You think the ether mirror is play play? You think the seventh city of gold is play play? Or the seventh city of Atlantis, you know, take over these uh, cities of gold, cities of gold, California gold rush, Atlantis, 
Septimania, seven, sept, seven, I know. <laughs> book of seven languages, seven cities, seven kingdoms, and even uh, Aquaman, Aquaman, too, got this oracalcum situation, however they spell it. <laughs> oracalcum is one of the most important elements of Aquaman. <laughs> God. And the Lost Kingdom or Calc has two main uses in the D C E U film. Black Manta and all this stuff. So they're keeping it going with the Or Calcum and Aquaman 2. They over there and Antarctica popping off. They doing everything, man. And we just over here connecting back, you know, to the copper, man. They call it or calcum, they call it the copper gold, the mountain copper. And we are just the copper colored cons that weren't brought here, but were found here. We are the originals. And it's a more and more war for the holy land, the Tarzanta, the promised land. In Dragon Lines, <laughs> where X marks the spot, Managi, 2024, in the year of the dragon. All my Nagas continue to choose up. Please hit the link below. Continue to support us by supporting our Patreon, where we're going to reach maximum pop off and continue to just drop that drop uncensored and unblocked. The water, you know, just for all your continued water you got flowing, the water for all the, the fire that you keep burning for yourself, for your tribe. And um, my Naga, I can't tell you enough, man. And with all humbleness and humilities man that you know without you my naga there would be no you know vision no no flow you know what i'm saying it takes a tribe it takes a collective mashiach a collective effort a collective vision so i, I just applaud you for getting this far to see what you about to see and witness what you about to witness as a collective my naga and um you know continue to witness and observe the code because that is the cheat code to get out the matrix, man. You know what I'm saying? The code makes you worthy. Worthy of your dragon rising. Worthy of your dragon flying. Your kundalini gets the kum, gets the rise. The kundalini gets the rise, man. You know, the water for all of your collective heart bones. Give each other love. Give each other AI. No matter what. You frustrated, just keep your water. Keep the water flowing, my nigga. There ain't no formula but to keep going. You've been oppressed. We've been oppressed. But the time is over. And no matter how much they try to throw it out and blitz us today and throw all type of, you know what I'm saying, uh, crossovers on us, man. Just know that, man, we got the straight path, man. The ball is right out in front. All we got to do is swing, batter, batter, swing. And you're going to hit home runs all day <laughs> on the field of Hijack City. The water, my cons for choosing up nine ether sauce, mem sauce, nine above the barrier. Stay up, suit up, choose up. <sighs> wow.